Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be taking this and putting it into something like this. So this here is one of the maps from the D&D campaign I'm currently in. Now for this project there was a few things I used. I used a grey lead pencil, I used a, a quill, uh, I was actually going to use a calligraphy pen but I found the quill worked a lot better. You will need some scissors, uh, you'll need something to either trace the size out or a measuring tape, and you'll need something to draw it on. I used this weird cotton canvas material, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I chose it because it was a little bit thicker than the others. And don't forget any odds and ends you might need as well. So to start off with, I laid out the fabric and traced around the object I was going to use as a measurement guide. This happened to be the map from the Skyrim video game, and if you're looking for actual measurements, I believe this was about 67 centimeters by 48 centimeters. Using the Skyrim map was ideal because it was the right size, and it also meant I was going to get some nice right angles and not end up with a rhombus or some other weird shape. I then went about drawing lines on the actual paper map and then folding the fabric into sections so that the lines translated onto the fabric. This will just make it easier to make sure that your scale is right and you're putting things in the right spot. And once I was happy with this, I went about with a grey lead pencil and started working out the basic shapes and placement of all of the objects. Now this is simply meant to be a rough guide, uh, I didn't actually work out all of the individual shapes of the icons in the map, I was just trying to get an idea of where the placement would be. And I also found that the grey lid didn't really show up very harshly on this fabric, so don't be afraid to make mistakes, they're not going to really show up in the end. So what actually is this place that I'm drawing? This is known as the Lunar Valley, and because we're playing on Roll20, our DM has created some really awesome visual tools for us. But we're looking to play again in person soon, and I got the urge to actually try creating a map that was similar to the one that comes with the Skyrim game. Something similar in terms of what the Critical Role cast has as well. And I'm not sure if anyone picked it up, but on the top section of the screen there you can see that I've actually been watching Critical Role throughout the process of making this map. It was really nice to just be able to chill, tune out a little bit and um, yeah sit back and watch it. It was really nice. But now back to the process. So what I'm doing here is using the ink and quill to draw a mountain range. Now I actually had a scrap piece of fabric off to the side there which you saw earlier in the video I was using to test this out and make sure I was happy with how I could actually do this because I don't I don't use this ink and uh, quill very often. I've had this since 2012. It is now 2021 and I still had like half a jar of ink left. So this was a bit of a new experience for me, but I really liked how it looked and you can actually tell over the course of making the map that my technique changed. I got better at it. I was more fluent at it and it was just really interesting to see. Do you have to use an ink and quill? Absolutely not. You can definitely use a fine liner, a calligraphy pen, uh, even some paint or a texture if you'd like, but I just found that this made the most sense for me. Now, I wouldn't recommend leaving this to a last minute thing. Don't try to get it done in a night. Um, these mountain ranges especially took a very long time. I believe we were around about 40 minutes in at this stage. So, uh, take it slow, take it slow. It might drive you a little mad, but the result is definitely worth it. But now let's talk about the first major place on this map. This is Dune Boulder. Yes, we, we also said that it sounded a lot like Dog or Dur, but um, funny how the subconscious works, isn't it? However, this place is actually not anything like Dog or Dur. Uh, Dune Boulder is a dwarven city uh, that is integrated into the mountain range here. It is a series of uh, plains and caves and it was quite awesome to visit actually, it was quite amazing. Um, the party went here in order to 
gain some information on a particular metal that was extracted from a magical object. Uh, while we were here, we actually found out that some of the dwarves that had been sent to the, what's probably the major town in the Luna Valley, had not returned. They'd gone completely missing, there was no contact whatsoever, and they had been sent to the mines of Somerstead. We now know that they were under the control of something, but we haven't quite figured out what yet. We're still waiting for the king to investigate it further on his own before we're allowed to get more involved. But just the idea that there was some sort of mountainous city at the lower end of the valley, which was actually one of the highest peaks of the valley, that was really cool. We were very interested in this place and kind of wanted to sidetrack a little bit um, and get here before the story caught up to us to get us there. But um, no, it was really awesome. Now, the next major place on this map is a fort called the Western Fort. Now, the Western Fort uh, was under the control from Somerstead for many years, but it was abandoned at some stage and a family of kobolds had moved in. This family of kobolds had turned into a small city of kobolds and the Somerstead Baron wanted them out so they could position their forces within that fort again. We found out that these kobolds had actually been displaced from a cave that had been filled with mind-controlling spiders. Yes, there's a bit of a theme here. And that was kind of terrifying and we cleared that out, but some elements of that particular mission have been starting to poke up elsewhere and I think this is going to be one of the main bad guys of this campaign. So now we're up to a new day, and if you thought the process of drawing these mountains was tedious, you would be absolutely right. I spent hours drawing this mountain range. Oh my god. But today we actually get to move on to some more fun things, which is drawing the little cities and icons, and oh, I love it. I think there's only one real way to do these mountains and that is simply to get into the habit of drawing them a certain way and just going on autopilot. Listen to an audiobook, listen to Critical Role, watch a YouTube video, listen to music, do whatever you want, but you really got to tune out with these. <laughs> but at this stage I was starting to pay more attention to the map itself. I was looking for when the mountains were smaller, when they were bigger, because this sort of gives you a sense of scale of how big this section of the mountain range actually is. So this part at the top, the mountains did seem to get larger than the ones around the edges, which is what I'm trying to do here. Now at this point here, there is a massive river that cuts through the center of the valley and I wasn't really sure how I wanted to draw this river, so I just started with the outline and moved on to working on another one of the major cities or towns. This town, we've actually forgotten how to pronounce. I believe it's Conclair, but it could be something completely different. This is a bridge town. It is a massive bridge that spans over the, the river and on either side of it are many stores. Um, there's lots of pop-up stores on the bridge. It reminded me a lot of Bowerstone Bridge in Fable too. Um, there's also massive towers at each end of the bridge that are manned by guards. When we passed through this bridge for the first time, we encountered devil toads. So that was fun. We also encountered a troop of platinum dragon um, Knights, uh, Knights of the Platinum Dragon. And I think they're going to come into play a bit later as well. There's been a lot of themes of Tiamat throughout this campaign as well, which has been very interesting. And I feel like there's a lot of little side quests, but side main quests as well 
if that makes sense. There are multiple streams of main quests is what I'm trying to get at. And our DM has done a fantastic job of it. But the city I'm working on now is actually a ruined city that we went into on our last session. This is the ruined elven city of Zarahol. And no one knows what the hell went on here. This is a very, very strange and surreal city. It is packed full of undead crawling the streets, but nothing that's too much of an issue. We didn't actually have any combat with these undead. There was a lot of scenes where we would just sling an arrow and they would fall over or we'd avoid them entirely. This was a very interesting part of the campaign because the NPC of our party, one of his best friends and who we assumed to also be his lover, went missing and he was suspected that he may have actually gone into this town. Now as we're going through we're discovering um, these four figures, these four important figures of history that keep coming up elsewhere. We found this statue, we read through the plaques of all the names and we realized that we had heard almost every single one of these before. So that was very interesting and I think that's definitely going to come up later. But the idea of the city was simply to find information, which we did. And sadly, we also found that Garifal, the uh, half-elk NPC member of the party, had actually lost his friend. His friend had been turned into an undead. So that was really depressing, and there was a funeral, and oh my god, that was really... Oh! Now the other town that you could see I could I put in while I was discussing Zarahol is Aquarius. We haven't actually been to this town before, we've been past it, so I don't have much to say on this particular town. It is a massive lake that has a town situated around it. That's pretty much all we know. It is a place of interest for my particular character who was looking for her lost brother. This is one of the places that he might be at, but we, we're not sure for we're not sure for certain and so we're leaving this for a bit later because we seem to have a lot of major things happening at the moment. But this town right here that I am drawing, this is Somerstead. This is where the story begins. This is where it continuously comes back to. Somerstead is the main city of the Lunar Valley. When we first arrived at Somerstead, there, we discovered there was actually an attack, an undead attack. And throughout investigating this, we found that there is an underground cult. Since going to Zarahol, we now know that this cult is under the influence of one of those four influential people that were the leaders of Zarahol before it became a ruined city. Everything is coming together, but this town, this is a ground zero. I think this is going to be a one, it's one of our main bases, but two, it's definitely going to be of sheer importance in the future. We've had a lot of quests in this town, a lot of things going on. We even had a heist in a guard tower between my character and our dragonborn sorcerer. We broke in, got some information. It was very funny. But this is a major city and I'm really interested to see what else happens here. And the tiny little dot I'm drawing right now, this is the Intercept Inn. This is our basically our um, crossroads in that we go to quite often. It is where our Cobalt uh, party member created Borkin, which was bacon from a boar, and it was very popular, and that inn has now since kicked off with its amazing new meal, and um, yeah, weird stuff happens to our party all the time. So here I'm just filling in the outline of the upper mountain range to get a sense of where everything is supposed to go and then I'm just colouring it in. I'm not sure if I preferred this method or the other method of where I do them individually, but this seemed to work really well for planning ahead.
so up here at the top of the map we have the entrance and exit of the Lunar Valley. These are called the Archers. They are very reminiscent of the two massive statues in the Lord of the Rings that are on either side of that river. I can't quite remember what they're called, but it's that sort of scale. These are massive. There is a very small town here which is basically a glorified guard base and this is where you pass in and out of the valley. It's a very interesting area and we have started to actually go outside of the valley and oh my god the world is massive and I'm gonna have to make another map just to account for all of the other places our DM has put into this world. He's done an amazing job. I haven't had him as a DM before and oh my god it's really good. I'm really excited to see what else this campaign has in store. So this here that I'm drawing was also another tedious area. Uh, this is a massive forest. I believe we've just called it the wilderness. I don't know if it actually has a name, but within this forest is a wood elf grove. Now this is just called the grove. It is a wood elf city that uh, belongs to an elven queen. That was really interesting. I wasn't expecting to find a civilization within this forest. And we also gained some insight into one of the potential big enemies of this campaign, which was associated with the kobolds and the mind-controlling spiders. Because the Elven Queen here actually knew of a person that fitted the description of what we were talking about. So I think this Elven Queen is definitely going to become a major player late game. But right now, she's sort of hidden away with the rest of her tribe.
And now for the last major uh, city or town or place of this map. We haven't actually been here yet. We know absolutely nothing about it whatsoever, but this is Grimfield Manor. There is also a massive cave or mine that is on the map opposite it. We have no idea anything about this place, so this will be another future area that we hope to explore. And this here marks the very final day of working on this. All up it took about five hours. So not my biggest project ever, but still a lot longer than I thought it was going to take, but well worth it in the end. And it was a very enjoyable process as well. I will definitely need to find a very nice frame for this in the future. And I really hope that it gets some use out of some in-person games soon. I think that'd be really fun to bring out. But what I'm up to here is simply finishing the mountain range in this uh, top left corner. And there's a few other bits and pieces I need to fill in as well. So with the river I decided to just shade it in so it appeared darker. I might go over this with a, a bit of an acrylic wash or something in the future, but this seemed to work well for now. 
I was considering adding some little, you know, cliff overhangs and um, ripples along the river, but I think this was more appropriate. I couldn't get the ripples to work and I wasn't exactly sure where the overhangs were, so this did the trick. fantasy map would be complete without a very fancy looking compass. I actually use the Skyrim's maps um, compass points as uh, inspiration for this one and I really liked how it turned out. I just went in with a pencil and kept adding details until I was happy with it and then I used the quill and ink to uh, line it. And now for one last finishing touch, we have to put the title of this map up here. So as this is of the Lunar Valley, I have decided to just put the Lunar Valley in a very simple wooden looking frame. I was also tempted to um, put my name on it somewhere or maybe put a character's name on it somewhere to say that they've uh, drawn it, but I couldn't work out who I actually wanted because the map in game is one that we've bought and scribbled stuff on over time. But that's another point. We scribble on our map so much and I would really love to add some of those details in here. So I've added an X for a temple we found, I've added a pathway we have carved into the wilderness and I want to add little bits and pieces of notes later on too. I did also consider if there are other ways I could make the map more durable, like things like using fray stop on the edges or making the material uh, a bit more rigid, but I think that'll be for another time. But now the map is complete, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I really loved making this and I hope that my other players and my DM will love this as well. And I wish you all a very good week and I will see you all next Friday. Bye!